going to learn about CSS specific. I'll say it in slow motion so you understand what I'm saying. Specificity. So anyways, during this video, I am going to be slaughtering that word, um, but don't worry about it. Uh, but the concept of this is uh, very, very important. So uh, basically what specificity <laughs> uh, means is it's, it takes and adds a weight value to different selectors. So we've got element selectors, uh, class selectors, ID selectors, uh, things like that. And then it adds a kind of like a point value to it to determine uh, what style rules should be applied. So for an example, to better explain this, let's, uh, let's dive into an example here. So here we have a uh, group of elements here, right, of element selectors. Well, what if we took an element selector here and we gave it the same uh, property of a color, but we wanted it something different, okay? So in each one of these uh, cases, We've got a header one uh, selector element, and the first one has a color of white, and the second one has a color of green. So let's see which declaration is going to take precedence here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to launch this. And it looks like that the font color uh, green took place, right? So before we had the uh, grouped elements, and then the last one where we did the standalone header one tag, it took the precedence of green. Now, why is that? Well, it's because each of these element selectors has a value of one. So check out the, uh, the calculator here uh, to the left, and you'll see that an element selector has the least uh, value of any of the other type of selectors. So when you have a uh, declaration of equal value, the one that comes last in your cascading style sheet is going to win. So for an example, let's uh, cut this one and we'll put it right above here, okay? And then let's go ahead and uh, check it out again. And now it's white, all right? And that's because the white header one uh, property value uh, came last in our uh, cascading style sheet, so it took precedence, all right? So we know that if we add multiple selectors to the declaration we're making, that it gets a higher point value. So what if uh, right over here, you see that we've got a div tag and our header one tag is nested inside of it. What if we went ahead and grabbed the div selector and then our header one, and we know that the header one is a descendant of the div tag here, which means we've got this header one that's inside of this div tag and then on the very outside here, we actually have a header one uh, tag that's outside of it. So what this means, is this is going to have a point value of two because we've got two elements uh, worth one point and then the one outside of our div element is going to inherit the color of white so let me show you what that looks like so you can see here uh, that we got the green now because we've got a higher point value and then the header one element that was outside of our div tag uh, just inherited uh, the white color there so let's come back to brackets. Now let's do another example. This one's going to be fun. So go ahead and copy this class here and give it some space above. And we're going to go ahead and paste it. And what I want you to do is on this top one, I want you to change this to body. And then on this one here, let's change it to HTML. All right. So and make the uh, HTML red. All right. Cool. So let's look at this. So we've got two element selectors on each. So we've got two points on these. But if we come over to our HTML, um, we've got this tag here. We're grabbing like the super parent, right? Because the HTML is like the very, very, very top element of this entire page. And we're saying every header one descendant of the HTML page, make it a color red. But then if we dive a little deeper, we've got this body tag in here. And we're saying, hey, every header one tag that is a descendant of the body, go ahead and make it green. So which one's going to take uh, precedence here? Which one's going to win? All right, so we've got the hierarchy of the HTML, which is a top element. And then we've got the body. So everybody uh, pull out some cash and everything, drop it on the table. Let's make some bets. And uh, let's go ahead and check this out. 
and it's red. Okay, well, that kind of makes sense because we assigned the red to our HTML, right? Uh, which in our uh, HTML page over here, it's like the top element. But what happens if we take the HTML and we cut it and we put it above the body? Are we still going to get the same result? And does anybody owe me money? Did you lose the bet? All right, so let's, uh, let's come back to the browser. And now we've got green. All right, so it changed. So it doesn't matter about the hierarchy in our HTML uh, page over here. So looking at the calculator again, we've got two HTML element selectors. Okay, they both have a point value of one, and there's two in here. So there's a point value of two that are equal. However, remember in a cascading style sheet, the last one with the uh, same points is going to win. So that's why uh, the green one here this last time around uh, took precedence. Let's go ahead and do another example and change your uh, HTML uh, class here. And we're going to grab the container class. All right. And then on the body, just go ahead and change it back to a div. So what we're saying here is every header one tag that is a descendant of this container, we want it to be red. And then we're also saying that every header one that is a descendant of the div tag, we want it to be green. So they both have two selectors in here, but let's see which one wins. So come back over to the browser, and you can see that our container class won, right? Because we've got the text that is red. So let's go back to the text editor and find out why. So looking at our calculator here, we can see that we get a point uh, for having a class, and we get a point for having an element. And then down here, we get a point for having an element, and we have another point for having an element. So over here, we have 11 points, which beats the two points down here. Making sense? You following? All right, so let's do something a little bit crazy here. And on this header one tag, go ahead and add an ID. Okay, and we're going to create this ID and equal it to foo. All right, and then save that. And then come over here, let's add some space up uh, top here. And what I want you to do is grab the element foo. And then we're going to change this to a color of red. All right. And then down here, let's grab our ID in a different way. Let's use an attribute selector. So create some uh, square brackets. And then in here, we're going to say every ID that is equal to foo we want this style property to have a color of kind. All right. So this is going to be interesting here because if we uh, remember our calculator, we're going to be adding up some points here. So we know that the IDs have a higher point value over our classes. But how is this going to work? Which one is going to win? We're grabbing the ID two separate ways. Well, let's go ahead and find out. So coming over to uh, this, heck, you can see that our uh, ID uh, class, or yeah, our ID selector is the one that won. And why is that? Well, let's pull open the calculator. So looking at the calculator, we get one point for having an ID. Uh, we don't have any classes in this, and we don't have any elements, so uh, we get zero points. And then over here, we actually get one point for having a class or an attribute uh, right here. Because in here, you can see that we have classes, pseudocode, and uh, attributes right here. So we get a point for having an attribute selector. And then there's no elements or anything else, so we get a point of 0. So we only got a point of 10 here. All right. So now there is one more um, way that we can do this, and this is with a uh, style property directly embedded inside of the HTML. So over here in our HTML, create a space. And let's go ahead and type in style. And then let's add a color. And we're going to make it different here. Let's make this one yellow. Let me lowercase that. OK, and then end it with a semicolon. So now we have embedded a uh, style color inside of our HTML element, this header one. So let's uh, check out how that works. And you can see that with the uh, style property added directly into our HTML, 
that it gave us the mo most points. So going back to our calculator, you can see that we get one point for having a, a style attribute inside of our HTML. And we don't have any of the other uh, IDs, classes, or elements, so we get zero points. So this, uh, in essence, gave us 1,000 points, right? Whereas the ID was only giving us 100. Um, but what if we got really, really, really specific with this ID over here? What if we just went crazy and we grabbed the HTML element and then the body and then the div tag with the class of container and then we went into the header one tag with the, um, with the ID of foo. Now that is pretty specific here, isn't it? I mean, if we're talking about specificity, whatever that is, we are very specific in what we're working with, right? So let's see which one is going to win, our inline or our um, super specific uh, selectors in here. And going to this, we check it out, and it's still yellow. And why is that? Well, let's look at our calculator. Even though um, we're being very, very specific here, let's see what these points add up to. Well, we get a point uh, for having an element. We get another point for having an ele element. We get another point for the div element. Uh, we get a point for the class. And we get a point for the header one element. And we get a point for the foo ID. And that gives us a total score of 114. So 1,000 still outbeats 114. So now there's one more thing that I want to cover in this, OK? And that is the important rule. Now, technically, important has nothing to do with um, it has nothing to do with it, all right? But it does affect how we use it, all right? Because it really overwrites the flow of our cascading style sheet. And let me show you what I mean by that. So we can come down here and let's go ahead and just, we're going to use this uh, right here. We're going to grab this header one element. All right, let me create some space here. So we're going to grab this header one element, all right? We've already got this inline uh, styling over here of yellow that's just dominating everything. It has uh, a 1,000 points, all right? But if we come to this header one and we have a color of green, which technically we only have a point value of one compared to a 1,000 here, and we add this important rule, this is going to override every single uh, style rule that has been applied to this header one. Now, I highly recommend uh, not using this. This is really going to mess up your uh, cascading style sheet when you're trying to debug things um, because it is such a hard override on this, OK? So let's go check this out uh, in the browser. So you can see that it has completely overridden all style attributes, uh, regardless of the way that we've nested our header one tag to target a color. Um, that important tag is going to dominate and completely nuke that point system. Only use important on page specific CSS that overrides foreign CSS, uh, like external libraries such as Bootstrap or normalized CSS. And really when it comes down to it, just be specific uh, for the element that you're trying to select. And you can do that by adding uh, additional elements, uh, selectors, in front of the element you're targeting like we did here when we were trying to target the header one. We added a bunch of selectors in front of it. And if you find yourself in situations where you're having conflicting style rules, go ahead and use the specificity point template that I have provided. Add things up and see where the problem is. That wraps it up for this lesson with CSS specificity. We'll see you then. Specific specificity. And I'll say it in slow motion so you understand what I'm saying. It's spec. Mark, what is it? Specificity. A better use of specific specificity. Specificity. Specific specificity. Specific specificity. I can't remember what Mark told me. Dude, this word. <laughs> oh.